Cold calling is tough, no matter if you're calling realtors, if you're calling sellers, if you're calling off market deals, if you're not calling real estate and calling you know, people to buy a car, to buy tickets, to buy something. Cold calling is tough and it's exhausting and it's mentally draining and it's not fun, but it is super effective. And I've built a multi six figure business, my wholesale business, mainly relying on cold calling. And cold calling still works and I'm still doing it, I'm still passionate about it and I still recommend it to anybody and everybody that's looking to get started but it is tough and in this video we're gonna talk about some tips to make cold calling less sucky and to overall improve your experience while cold calling and your efficiency now this video isn't targeted specifically to wholesaling real estate but that's kind of like what my channel is I guess like the niche of my channel is like real estate so I think most of the audience will come from that but it can apply for anything so I've cold called for you know three plus years for my wholesale business I'm not really cold calling anymore because I have you know people doing it for me that I hired but I cold called for wholesale real estate I've cold called sellers off market. I've cold called realtors. I've cold called brokers. I've cold called lenders. I've cold called anybody and everything. And not all those cold calls are as hard where if you're cold calling a lender to get lending, they want to talk to you versus cold calling an off market seller that's like, leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. My house isn't for sale versus cold calling a realtor that wants to talk to you because they have a listing for sale, although they're not always the nicest people <laughs> to talk to. Um, but cold calling is cold calling, no matter who you're doing it for, who you're doing it with. Before I did cold calling for real estate, I cold called selling season tickets for a major league sports team in Miami. Hey, do you want to come out to the stadium? Do you want to come out to see the stadium? You want to buy seated tickets? You want to buy luxury seating, group seating, all of that. We cold called anybody and everybody and I've done it all. And I've done cold calling eight plus hours a day with no breaks and I've done cold calling one hour a day and I'm exhausted after. If I have to narrow it down to some tips, this is what the tips would be. My first tip, and this is what I teach people, even though I don't have a mentorship, but when people ask me and also like just, you know, what I did when I started out was just fumble your way through the calls. Like I love doing this because that's the best experience. Like I promise you, if you fumble your way through one week of cold calling, you'll be a completely different cold caller week two. Like you'll learn, your, your brain like adapts. So an example is you call somebody, you go, hey, it's Alec, how are you today? And then they respond negatively to the, how are you today? Well, now you know next one, it's like, okay, maybe I should get to the point quicker. So you go, hey, it's Alec, just calling about blank. So as you do it, you adapt, you learn what's good, what's not good. You mentally take notes of, hey, I got a good call, I got a good lead. This is how I structured the call. This is how the call flowed. You learn how to answer questions. You just learn as you're doing it. If you got two cold callers, you have one cold caller with, you know, let's say two months of cold call experience. And then you got another cold caller with a year of studying the art of cold calling, studying cold calling, but this person never cold calls. I would pick the first person that has two months of cold call experience over the person with year of studying cold calling and that's because the person that has the experience has actually done it studying cold calling does not prepare you at all for cold calling the next tip is something that if you watch my cold calling videos my old ones which is some really good gems in there because i was just organically uploading that stuff like nothing held back one i'm very trusting right and i'm not like super trusting you know no like, you don't trust strangers you can't trust strangers but like just how i like orchestrate the conversation and how i present myself like i'm trusting it's i'm not desperate i'm not hey you know i really want to buy your house it's like hey you know like this is where i'm at like if we do it if not like it's okay i ask open-ended questions i sound like a person so instead of like this topic being like be trusting like i guess you know point number two is like sound authentic like be a person be their friend in a way to be like friendly but not like their friend obviously but like just like sound like authentic like just be there for this person like you're cold calling them you're interrupting their day you're aware of that but you're also just a cool guy that's just calling them you know so i mean i think myself like i'm cool <laughs> you know but when i'm also when i'm cold calling i kind of have like a weird like persona i guess like it's kind of like a costume i'm wearing where it's like i'm super cool like hey i'm just this like chill guy this real estate investor that's calling like one person and i want to see if they're going to sell their house and see if i could buy it and i'm just a cool guy like 
that's kind of like the persona and the costume I wear, like the t-shirt I put on is like that kind of figure, right? Instead of this figure a lot of people wear when they cold call, it's like, oh, I'm super nervous. The person's gonna know I'm new to cold calling. It's like that person on the phone has no idea who you are. And that leads me into my third point, which is have short-term memory. And what I mean by this is there's an expression for quarterbacks. I'm a big like, football guy. And it's like, to be a quarterback, you need to have short-term memory, right? You get sacked, you need to forget about that and go into the next play. You fumble the ball, they score a touchdown, you throw a pick six, you know, you need to get back out there and do the next play. And as cold calling, you need to do the same thing. Like you completely fumble the cold call. Like it was a horrible call, it was embarrassing. Like you just want to like put the blanket over your head. That's normal. First of all, like we've all been there, like even me, even recent times, like I still fumbled cold calls and stuff, but you have to forget that call because the next person as, unless it's like their cousin or brother, or like they're in the same room or even then, like the next person is a completely different person. They have no idea that you just completely fumbled that call. So you have to keep that like mindset, you know, I fucked up this call, I learned what I did wrong and now I'm on to the next one. You have to like have that short term memory, have that mindset. And my last tip is do something entertaining while cold calling. Like. For all my cold callers in my company, like I don't care what they do. If they watch movies, watch TV, you know, play video games, like whatever they do, I don't care as long as they're working. And when I was cold calling, you know, especially three years ago when I was cold calling eight hours a day, you think I was just sitting in like a little cubicle, like cold calling? Like absolutely not. Like I was watching movies, like I was doing stuff. Like I was actually super productive on the side when it came to like the entertainment and like cultural world. Like I was like, you know, watching everything back then, like playing games, everything. Before I got into real estate, when I worked on a main job and I was cold calling, like I used to just like browse reddit and facebook and stuff although i got in trouble for that i used to tell my boss like i'm more productive while i'm doing that like i can kind of multitask i can you know watch this while i'm waiting for the calls and as soon as i get the calls i could you know zone it out i could pause it like you don't want to play like an online game or something in my opinion unless you're really good but like you can pause that activity move to the cold calling and in between calls do that and also when the call ends it makes you less likely to stand up and go to the bathroom or you know maybe not go to the bathroom but like you know distract yourself because you're gonna be like oh yeah let me continue watching this movie watching this show you know reading this article playing this game so i think it's good to distract yourself i mean i think like all those games and stuff is good in like moderation. I mean, I know so many high level entrepreneurs that play video games every night or watch movies or, you know, binge Netflix. And it's like, there's like this persona where it's like, oh, if you're an entrepreneur, you can't do this. You're not allowed to watch TV. You have to just, you know, do all this, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, bro, like do your thing, you know, like you don't have to work 24 seven. So yeah, that, that's some tips for cold calling. I don't want this video to go too long. Hope this video provide value. Let me know if you want more cold calling tips. I think I've done these videos before, maybe not. Not, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. You know, like, comment, subscribe, and hope to see you on the next video.